Hi, I'm Kishwa. Join me on this four-part series as I uncover how different communities celebrate Diwali in Australia. I'll also be taking you into my home kitchen to share some of my favourite festival dishes. So light up a dia and let's get started. In this episode, I'm exploring the dressage associated with the festival of Diwali and how Indian fashion has grown and changed over the years in Australia. I'm headed to see my good friend, Australian Punjabi designer, Manavi. She's created Garigo to bridge the gap between Indian fashion in Australia and make Indian designer wear accessible to the growing community. Manavi, thank you so much for having us here at Garigo. I love coming here because of just how colourful and beautiful and aesthetic this place is. Tell us about your connection with Diwali and how Garigo all started. I wanted to bring a piece of India to Australia um, and sort of bridge that gap between quality and authentic South Asian craftsmanship um, and to really inspire everyone with it. How do you think the diaspora has changed since you've been here? I have actually seen a noticeable shift as well in people's mindset um, to you know spend on that quality piece, spend on that glo- um, really nice modern cut blouse. Their mindsets have changed, their spending power has changed as South Asian communities have established themselves a lot more here now. What do you think are some of the biggest influences of Indian fashion and how that's reflected in Australia in this generation? Oh, um, I think social media, really. Social media, TV, movies, Bollywood movies. Um, you know, people are a lot more aware of designer labels now. People are a lot more aware of global fashion trends now. Tell us what we're going to be wearing this Diwali. Diwali is um, a series of festivities for a daytime puja. Um, something like this could be really nice. And I love men in floral prints. This sort of embraces the modern South Asian man. Something like this. It's called a lehenga. It's a skirt top and it usually comes with a dupatta which is like a scarf. Are there certain regions where lehengas are more popular? Look to be honest today everywhere a lot of the young girls are really trending towards the lehengas. Um, I guess traditionally more Rajasthan maybe to start from there. A very modern cut blouse with sharara pants. You know how like a sari's got a pallu attached to it? This is like a sari drape that's very contemporary. In Punjab, Diwali is celebrated a little bit differently. It's actually called Bandi Chor Divas. Uh, whereas Delhi, where I'm originally from, even though I'm Sikh and Punjabi, I was born in Delhi. So we celebrate Diwali a little bit differently. We uh, go to the Gurdwara still, we uh, pray, we light up candles all around our house and in the Gurdwara we do seva. One of the fundamental teachings from Guru Nanak Dev Ji is actually to give back to the community. So whether that's through charity or through our langar seva. We clean our houses, you know, completely illuminate our houses with lights. It's literally all about celebrating victory and, you know, good over evil. I'm really all about what you're eating during this festival. Tell me a little bit about your favourites and the food in your home. Well, I love a good butter chicken with the <laughs> paratha. Like that is my favourite Punjabi food. Um, but you know, like a good street style food, like a good chole bature. Yum! Yum! Yum. <laughs> I feel like I've been completely transported to Punjab and ready for Diwali. And I'm inspired by your top picks. I might cook something when I get home. Welcome back to my kitchen. Today I'm going to share with you one of my favourite Punjabi dishes, chole bhature. Before we start, my tip for the perfect fluffy bhature is to use wholemeal flour, but I like to use a self-raising wholemeal flour and add a teaspoon of baking powder. The key to this is the resting time. So it's very quick and simple. Don't be intimidated. Follow me along because all the recipes I'm showing you are really, really easy. I'm going to start by showing you how to make the dough for the bhature fried breads. Place all the dry ingredients into a stand mixer with the dough hook on. Add yogurt and oil and set it on a medium speed. I like to keep it mixing on a medium speed for about 4-6 to six minutes just until I know that gluten has been activated. Tip out onto your bench top and give it a really good knead. Now place into a bowl, cover with a tea towel and leave it to rest in a warm area for at least half an hour. While that's resting, we're going to make the chole chickpea curry. Heat a medium pan or wok and add a little oil before adding ghee to make sure that the ghee doesn't burn. Add your ginger, garlic paste and onion and all your whole spices. Once the onions turn a golden brown, add the ground spices except for the chaat masala. At this point, I like to add a teaspoon of water at a time just to make sure that the onions don't burn. 
Now once you smell the aroma of those beautiful spices toasting away, add in your chickpeas that you have soaked and cooked overnight, retaining that chickpea water or aquafaba. Cover and let it simmer on a low heat for 20 minutes so that the chickpeas can soak up those beautiful toasted spices. At the very end, I like to add chaat masala, a little bit of lemon juice, and garnish with coriander and chili. Now let's get back to frying those paturo breads. Now that our dough has rested, separate your dough into 50 gram balls. I like to roll out into about three millimeter thickness. In a small wok, you wanna heat the oil to about a medium heat. If it's too hot, the breads are gonna burn before they've cooked through. Place your rolled out breads into the oil and fry until a beautiful crispy golden brown. If you're lucky, some of them are going to turn into beautiful balloons. Serve immediately with your chole chickpea curry. I can assure you this is a delight on the senses. This dish is the quintessential Punjabi street food dish to bring in the festival of Diwali.